Hello, I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I'm here with Brother Rick Ellis, the founder of I Am A Person International. And we've distributed these I Am A Person all over the world. I've distributed thousands of them myself in the United States and mostly in Kenya and Uganda. But uh, Rick has sent them all over the world through I Am A Person International. And Rick has a message, a general message for everyone. But specifically to today, we want to direct our message toward the people, uh, Africa people uh, in Africa and directly toward East Africa, especially Kenya, where my family is, mm. Kenya and Uganda. Because more being the, um, the key to much of Africa through the Indian Ocean, Kenya has been a target for the very people who have enslaved us in the United States of America. And Brother Rick has dealt with these people over and over and over ad nauseum for many years. He's got a very vital, important warning for the people of Africa, for all African people, for all people around the world who don't want to be, hear me now, subject to the same enslavement, enslavement to lies that we've suffered under here in the United States. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Rick. Uh, an elder in the faith and the founder of I Am A Person International mm -hmm. to give us this warning. Yeah, well I just want to give a little background of I Am A Person. Um, as you can see the first two words on the, on the poster is I Am and uh, we actually had some Orthodox Jews wouldn't get in, would not get involved with our, our, uh, our presentation because and rightly so they said well that's that's the name of God I Am and I said you're right you're absolutely correct that's why we chose those first two words, I am. And it's uh, uh, Jesus all through the scripture made those I am statements. You know, I am the resurrection. You know, I am these things. And so that's exactly what we were trying to convey with that message is uh, that Jesus Christ is the I am. You know, and that uh, he became it. Let me read this scripture in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. You know, um, I've had people try to tell me I'm not very biblical with I'm a person, and they, they give me a lot of grief about it and stuff. It's just insane, but uh, th this is what this is based on, okay? The Yahweh, the great I am. Yeah. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, the I am, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That means he became flesh and dwelt among us. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. That's exactly what the great I am took on human flesh, and that's exactly what he came to do. And the, at the point of conception, that's when Jesus became his one of us. That the great I am became a person. Became a person. And I've had people say, well, I'm not biblical and all this stuff when I'm talking about person, you know. And these same people, and you watch them, if they come your way and they start talking about human being and life and human being and life and human being and life. Well, the subject never was about human being and life. And I'm fixing to show you that even uh, our salvation, our salvation is based on the person, not the humanity of Christ, but the person of Christ. That Jesus Christ is a composite whole. He's God Almighty in human flesh. A person. That's his composite whole. That's who he is as a person. As truly God and truly man. Beginning you know, at the incarnation. At the incarnation. The moment that, that the seed of faith, the seed of Abraham, hit, hit the egg of Mary, um, uh, faith became manifest on the earth in the person of Jesus, of Christ. Jesus Christ. God Almighty in human flesh. Okay? <clears throat> And that, and the Bible says that that the seed of Abraham is Christ. There it is. Oh, you know. And so my whole question is, and particularly the so-called Christians who try to tell me that they're pro-choice Christians. Okay, you're going to tell me you love the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can turn around without any thought or, or about it at all and destroy the pre-born image of the Lord Jesus Christ. No at way. what point did he take on human flesh? The Bible just said he took on human flesh, didn't it? No. He yes, absolutely said it. Yeah. At what point? At conception. You know, so if you destroy 
the preborn child, you're destroying the image of the preborn Christ. I think we can get even a little more precise and say and say fertilization because people yeah. are playing with words. Yeah. Some people have tried to redefine conception as implantation. Right. Uh, it's not true, but we're, that's what we're talking about when the egg was fertilized. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. personhood, actually, for all those who uh, AHA and OSA and all you other alphabet soup of uh, fraudulent, dominionist, uh, false, antichrist, pro-life movement, you need to understand that personhood is a salvation issue uh, according to the uh, doctrines of the, of the Scripture. Our forgiveness is even in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible absolutely says so. And here's the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthians in the second chapter of Corinthians. Uh, I mean, not sec second Corinthians, chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 10. It says, To whom ye forgive anything, okay, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. The person of the Christ. The person of Christ. The person of Christ. Who is God Almighty in human flesh. Our very salvation, our very forgiveness is based on not the humanity of Christ, but the person of Christ. And for all you punks who want to sit out there and, and say that I'm not biblical, show me how I ain't biblical. You know? Show me how I ain't biblical. And yeah, I said punk. I meant it. They're punks. They're, they're, they're blasphemers. They're Christ deniers. Whenever you deny the person of when you refuse to use the word person in conjunction with the preborn child, you're antichrist. Now, Rick, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. At this moment, you're not specifically talking about the pro-abortion, pro-choice people. You're talking about no. I'm about talking about pro-lifers. Pro-lifers. I'm talking about the pro-life movement in America is antichrist. Yeah. It absolutely is. They absolutely refuse to use the word person. They use human being and they use life. Human being life. Human being life. It was never about human being. If you read it, uh, the court decision of Roe versus Wade, that's right. Because they agreed that the pre-born child was a human. A human. And they agreed that the pre-born child was alive. What they questioned was, at what point in human development do you become a legal person? A person. A person. Now, just a minute here. Listen to Brother Rick. This is like, let me make an analogy, when Jesus Christ said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. He wasn't warning people about the Gentiles or the pagans or the Roman gods no. or the Greek gods. Jesus was saying, Here's your danger. This is the big danger for you people who are hearing me. Right. It's not these people outside. No. It's the controlled opposition. Right. The people within who claim the God, the Yahweh, the great I am. They, they claim and him. And deny him in action. But they're controlled opposition within, within the people who claim God. And mm -hmm. that's when he mentioned AHA, he's talking about a group that calls itself Abolish Human Abortion. And they have... Uh, stubbornly, stubbornly, stubbornly refused to use this word person. When not only bib not only is it biblical, they say it's not biblical, we've yeah. just proven to you, it's, it's biblical. biblical. Not only is it bi totally biblical, Our totally biblical. depends on it. it. That's correct. On the person of Christ, not his humanity, on the person. So not only is it uh, in perfect harmony with the gospel, totally biblical, but Almost more importantly, or at least more importantly to this specific uh, issue of the preborn being denied their legal rights under governments, it is exactly in line with the language of the tradition of constitutional West and parliamentary Western governments. From British common law, which colonized Uganda, which colonized the United States, uh, which colonized Kenya, we all, we, we all inherit in the English-speaking world, a mutual tradition of British common law and Magna Carta, and it revolves around, whether Person. you look at Blackstone, whether you look at the, the Declaration of Independence of the United States, mm -hmm. the founding colonial laws of uh, Uganda or of Kenya, or even the Constitution, even the new Constitution of Kenya, built on the same foundation. And it, it ask a lawyer in Kenya, anyone who's worth his salt, he'll tell you, and they've told me to my face, in Kenya, in Nakuru, and in Nairobi, that the crux of the issue is not anything other than the question of whether or not the preborn child is a person, is recognized as a person under the law with equal protection. Amen. Hey, listen, guys, don't let, because I got a feeling they're probably, uh, my brother here is telling me, they're probably already coming your way. They are. 
And if you got these soft soapin people that want to talk about human being and life, uh, they're liars. They're liars and they're misrepresenting the issue. The, the, the court in America never denied that the preborn child was a human being and it never denied that they were alive. And the pro boards would love to keep you in a, in a false argument because as long as you're uh, arguing a false argument, you're never going to get down to what stops it. Yeah, because the question is not, you know, is abortion mean? Is it not mean? Is it good? No. Is it not good? Is it a human? Is it? The question is, are we going to recognize the rights of these mm -hmm. persons? This is right. a person. Are we going to assert? And so don't let yourself be detracted uh, or, 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 or sidetracked. And don't adopt it. Don't refuse it. If somebody comes up and starts talking human being and life to you, rebuke them. And rebuke them sharply and tell them, just as we read in this scripture, that the very salvation of Christ is based in his personhood, for crying out loud. So they need to be rebuked and rebuked sharply. If they can't say the preborn child is a person made in the image of the preborn Christ, they're antichrist. Because you're disagreeing with the Bible and you're disagreeing with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't disagree with Christ and turn around to call yourself a Christian. If you disagree with Christ, you're contrary to Christ, makes you antichrist. And that's what I'm saying, that the most of the pro-life movement, they don't realize it, most of them good people, whatever, but they're antichrist. Whenever they will not say person, and they talk about human being and humanity and life and all this stuff, they're antichrist. They will not say person. And why don't they say person? Because they know it's game, set, match, it's over. They can't sell their t-shirts. They can't uh, uh, rent the big luxury suite offices and all that stuff. Their game is over. The con game's over. And that's how they get their power and that's how they get their money. You know, they live in big fine homes on pro-life dime and they know that if we declare the preborn child as a person according to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, it's game, set, match, it's over. Even Roe versus Wade in uh, footnote 54, I think it is, Blackman said that. That if, it, if a legislature ever establishes that the preborn child is a person, Roe versus Wade collapses, they have no case because the preborn child is, is defended uh, by the 14th Amendment. And if the court would have actually read the 14th Amendment, they would have completely thrown it out and heard about it. Here's the 14th Amendment, here's what it says. Now I want y'all to pay attention to the language here. The first three words is game, set, match on this issue. All persons born, okay? This is the amendment in the United States of America that abolished slavery. slavery. All persons, okay? It's saying persons. Born. What were you pre-birth? It's implying heavily that before you were born, mm -hmm. you're a person right there. Yeah. It's heavily applying, uh, implying that. All now, persons born. All persons born. Now, you have to be born to be a citizen. I grant you that. But the, the, the amendment is not just talking about the rights of citizen. Because it goes on and says, uh, persons born or naturalized in the United States is subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges, the privileges of being a citizen. That's right. Okay. Or immunities of citizens of the United States. All right, now look, it, it changes gears here. It, and it's got this addendum to it, but it's a negative one. It's saying that the state can't do something. Right. Okay. And, and, and so this is added to it. It says, nor, nor, nor shall any state deprive any person. Any person. Any person. Now, the first part of this, uh, of this amendment says that the pre-born are persons because it would, otherwise it would have said any born person instead of saying any person born. Now, you've got to be born to be a citizen, I grant you that. But it heavily implies, heavily implies that you're a person pre-birth. Otherwise, the language birth. would have been flopped around. It would have said birth. born person. Yeah. implying that you have to be born to be a person. It's not saying that. It's saying that you have to be born to be a citizen. Granted, got you there. You know, understand that. And they ha there's great privileges that come with being a citizen of the United States of America. But then it says, no, nor shall nor any, any person. state yeah. deprive any person. Citizen or not. Any person. Yeah regardless of whether they're a citizen or not. And the reason they did this was to combat the Runaway Slave Act. Because they weren't citizens. Yeah, 
Yeah. In other words, they weren't a citizen of that state, uh, Virginia or whatever. Yeah, state so it was. you couldn't just yeah. you couldn't just ramrod somebody and and send them back to another state to be uh, put in manacles mm-hmm. simply because they're not a citizen, didn't mm-hmm. have rights. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's attributing rights to all persons, state deprived any person, and the first one being life, right to life. First one being life. First read out of the box what it says. State shall deprive any person of life. You can't just kill somebody because you don't like them, because they're a person and they have rights. Now, in the decades, can I can I jump in here yeah. with something? In the decades since we passed this amendment to give the slave to emancipate the slaves and give them and recognize their right to life, liberty. Uh, in the decades since then, a philosophy has held sway in the United States of America to up up to this day. That has power right now. And I want to contend that there's a religion on this earth right now that says it's monotheistic, says it mm-hmm. believes in only one God, but this religion denies that a human being is a person before birth. And they, they believe this religion teaches that ensoulment, that your dignity, that your personhood comes when you first Draw, suck, yeah. suck breath. That that's when you become a person. That religion is Talmudic Judaism. Absolutely. And because Christians have not uh, defended our God, see, Talmudic Judaism utterly repudiates and rejects the God who became a baby in the womb of Mary through fertilization. Calls him a blasphemer. They, they blaspheme him. They well, reject they him. him they call him a blasphemer. And their rejection of God, the word become flesh in the womb of Mary, leads them to the theology that denies the image of God Amen. on the preborn baby. Amen. And and by allowing their philosophy, by not defending the Christian truth of the incarnation of the person of the Trinity, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, Yahweh, the great I am, the great I am, by by refusing to defend him, Christians have allowed the Talmudic, the Talmudic Antichrist Jewish philosophy of human life to rule over us. Don't do this, Africans. Well, and it's breaking the law. Uh, the, the people who stand up and declare that the preborn child need to be defended the same as a born child and, and these uh, false a, uh, groups like AHA and OSA and all the rest of them uh, will say, well, you know, we can't do that because the law says not to do it. They're controlled opposition. They're controlled opposition. They're liars or they're thieves. They're antichrist. And they're antichrist. antichrist. They, deny the, the, they deny the personhood of the preborn child. They deny that the preborn child shares in the personhood of Christ, the very image of Christ. We are begging you. We are begging you. We are beseeching you. Mm. Don't be enslaved Do to Do not be enslaved to him. Now, here's another, here's another point in, this, in the 14th Amendment. It says... Now here's another nor. That means that it's a negative towards the uh, the government, uh, uh, restraining government. Nor deny. Now listen to this. Listen to this. this is why I'm defensive action. It's saying right here in the Fourteenth Amendment. It says nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Equal defense. That's correct. Equal defense from from evil aggression. And we do it. We break the law. There are lawbreakers. AHA, you're a lawbreaker. Lawbreakers. OSA, you're a lawbreaker. Outlaws. And you are Outlaws. You, you're nothing more than a narcissistic personality cult ran by uh, liars, Antichrist because liars. There is no right to life without the right to defend it. It's meaningless. When there is no right to defend life, you're a liar. There's no right to life. I'm sorry, you're liars. I, I I can't hold back anymore. I can't put it any. I can't soft soap it for Are you. Are you talking about T. Russell Hunter? I'm talking about T. Russell Hunter and, and Rusty Thomas both. You're liars. You're blasphemers. You're antichrist. Uh, you don't believe the Bible. Your theology is is contrary to Jesus Christ. And when you're contrary to Christ, you're antichrist. And that's just a fact. Your dominionism and all that stuff, you're nothing more than the little personality cults running around. You're the only rooster in the hen house. And anybody who would dare stand up to you and, and call you on things, you use all your accumulated authority to destroy them. 
Uh, I mean, let's just be honest about it. And listen here, Kenya, you better listen up real clear. If the, anybody from these groups comes your way, anybody from the American pro-life movement comes your way and starts talking about human being and you don't have the right uh, to defend a pre-born child, you need to rebuke them openly and say, no, we believe in the personhood of the pre-born child. We believe that Jesus Christ is God Almighty in human flesh and that our salvation and our forgiveness is based in the person of Christ. Now, if you want to tell me I'm not biblical, then you best get your book open and show me how. But my Bible says that it was the person of Christ that bought our salvation for us and our forgiveness for us because he became flesh, dwelt among us, and laid down that perfect life as a person and uh, uh, through his crucif death, burial, and uh, resurrection, that we have eternal life. And Rick, I, I think it's about the gospel, too. It is about Christ the gospel. Because Christ died for these persons. Absolutely. And so if these people come to you, these, you know, beware the leaven of the American pro-life movement. Let me beware say it again. It. Beware the leaven. I'm going to say it. They're the, Antichrist. That's right. That's right. Because they do not agree with and, the Bible, and they don't agree with Christ. It's very simple. Just look, look at them and They're say, Antichrist. can you say these words? Here's person. how you fix it. No, not only, yeah, person. The word person, they first of all. They can't say it. But they can't, they can't say the preborn persons deserve the defense. same defense and as the born read, persons. According to the law, they say that I'm lawless. But according to the law of the Constitution of the United States of America, no person can be denied defense. So that's how you know them. Ask them, do the preborn persons deserve, deserve the same defense as the born persons? Can they say it? According can they let the those law, words come out of their mouth? And the supreme law of the United States of America is the United States Constitution. Regardless of whether you want to argue the, the merits or whatever, humanism or whatever you want to argue. But listen to this. In the preamble of the United States Constitution, okay, now the preamble sets the spirit of the document. In other words, everything that comes after the preamble of the Constitution needs to be in line with the spirit of the document. That's the context. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You count 40 words, 40 words into the, uh, of the spirit of this document, which some would say is, is, the, uh, is the number of generations. You know, that can be either here or there, but I guarantee you, you count 40 words into the United States preamble of the Constitution and you see the word posterity. You're looking at a picture of posterity. It means future generations. That's what that is. That's why we use this picture. It's a picture of future generations right there. Okay? Now, in the context, it says posterity. Now, listen to what it says. It, listen to what it says. And secure. What does secure mean? What does secure mean? Protect it means you put defend. it in a safe place. Yeah. That you secure it. That you don't allow the evil aggressors to come and, 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 and do ugly things. You secure the blessings. <laughs> you secure the blessings of liberty. Liberty means to be free from, not free to do as you please, but free from evil. Free from evil aggressors. Amen. That's what it means. Amen. Liberty means to be free from. That's what the whole document was about, was to set America free from the, from the evil oppression of, of a wicked king in, in Europe. You know, the thought that they had the right to rule men uh, by the perversion of, of uh, the biblical doctrine of election. You know, uh, blessings of liberty are right, to ourselves and our posterity. posterity. To our posterity. Uh, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. How in the world are you going to tell me that I am lawless because I say that the preborn child deserves to be protected? That is our posterity. When the founding document said this is the law of the land, not a judge's uh, decision. A court decision is not law. You know, that is a renegade court who overstepped their authority and said that a woman has a right to kill her preborn child. It's just like I, I say all the time. It's like if you invited a bunch of people over for dinner, and then all of a sudden, well, that's an inconvenience. I'll just shoot the dinner guests. Whenever you get intimate with each other, that is an invitation to a child to come into this world. And then you're going to turn around and kill that child because you weren't sincere about the invitation. Mm. And that's what you're doing. Okay, you need to understand the, the grave responsibility of intimacy between a man and a woman. And you're inviting life into this world. 
and a, a life that bears the very image of the preborn Christ. The image of God. The image of God. God in flesh. That's what you're doing. And are you going to try to tell me that somehow I'm not biblical, which AHA has, and OSA and all the rest of these dominionist uh, 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 heretics. I'm going to say it just like that. You know, you Antichrist heretics are going to say, I'm not biblical when I just showed you in the Bible that your very salvation is based on the person of Christ. You know, what about that, boys? What about it? You know, you want to talk about humanity this and uh, abolish human abortion and all that, and you want to tell me how you're, you're the big uh, purveyors of... Uh, a biblical truth when you can't even say the word person. You can't put the word person on any of your literature. Hey, Rick, let's put this in perspective. When I go get my hair cut, right. they cut off my hair, and they sweep it all up. That's human hair. That's all human hair on the floor it's there. It doesn't have a right to live. No. It's not a person. It's not recognized, uh, either in the Bible or no. in the Constitution. That's the key. And it, it really is. And uh, listen here, friends. My friends in Kenya, listen to me. Listen, if you never heard anything else, there has been a conspiracy against the people of Africa, the same people who's given us the, the, the false abortion issue, has given us the false pro-life movement. There's a cabal that hates you and wants to destroy you because they think you're less than. They absolutely do. They have perverted the doctrine of election in the Bible, and they say that certain people groups are less than, and they're not the elect. And that's how they have. That's the uh, the excuse that they have used down through the centuries to oppress the people of Africa, to steal their their uh, their heritage away from them, to steal their their riches away from them, and the and the natural resources that Africa has to kill people off. I mean, Rhodes scholarship comes from a man who put Gatling guns on wagons and drove through whole villages and wiped everybody out. Cecil Rhodes to to uh, yeah. confiscate the diamond mines of South. Africa, and he did so on that false doctrine uh, of a uh, uh, perversion of election, that the white man is the elect, the black man not so much. And that's exactly how they uh, uh, put men in shackles and worked them for nothing that's right. That's right. and killed them without any impunity. In America, it's the same thing. It's a perverted doctrine. I am all for the Bible, and the Bible talks about election, but it says out of every kindred, out of every nation, out of every blood. They hate you. They hate, they hate you. you. No babies in they America have been bored, aborted at the rate, at the, rate the black babies, African, babies of African origin have been aborted, and they Amen. want it for you. But if you will catch on now and spread this word Amen. and get wild, Okay, Amen. and pay attention. This Amen. is the colonialism you have to fear. This is worse than the old colonialism. Denying your This person. is the real neo-colonialism from Satan. Amen. But if you'll reject it, you'll set in motion what uh, one of the Proverbs of Solomon, I don't have the reference right now, but it says that when people lay a trap, when they set a snare for their They'll neighbor, in it they're going to fall in it themselves. So if you get wise and pay Amen. attention and ask God and ask Jesus Christ to defend you, and protect you and go about the business of sorting through this and defending the truth and defending the lives of these children made in his image then he will turn that trap <laughs> that they set to catch you he'll turn Amen. it on them in a way Amen. they can't even anticipate and Amen. he'll defend you but if you decide to let them uh, lead you into this trap it's on you Amen. It is. Yeah. I, I just want to, uh, from the standpoint, I'm going to pull a Daniel on you. Uh, we read in Daniel how Daniel, even though he was a very righteous guy, I mean, nobody would deny that, but whenever he got before the Lord and started praying before the Lord, even though he was a righteous man, he repented for his nation. He said, we he, did it. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. So let me get this said before I bust out crying. But I'm going to look straight at you people in Kenya, and you need to hear me when I say that I'm going to repent for my nation of America. I'm going to repent uh, for the Caucasian race that thinks that, that it's, it's the elect and it's above everybody else and all other nations are subject to them because they're the elect and nobody else is. You know, uh, two world wars were fought over that false thing. The, 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 the hyper... Um, uh, thing of election. 
I believe elections in the Bible, and it's absolutely true. But anybody, anybody who who has professed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is part of the elect. That's what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to stand here before you and God and everybody, and I'm going to look you straight as I look in this camera. I'm going to look you straight in the eye, and I'm going to tell you, uh, Africans, hear me. I'm repenting uh, for my nation and for the Caucasian people. I'm repenting that you're not less than. You know, your culture may be, has some problems, well, who doesn't? You, you may be a, lagging a little bit of a hind, but I'm saying that you were that you were purposely kept behind. Amen. You know, you've got the natural resources. You're the one who's just supposed to be. God gave that to you. And uh, uh, roads and people like that and the imperialism of, of uh, uh, the European nations came over and pillaged things from you. And they didn't do it in an honest way. And uh, I'm here to repent of that. But this is exactly from the very same crowd, the very same cabal, the very same conspirators are saying that uh, that uh, we need to kill off as many of these babies as we possibly can to maintain their power and that's all it's about you know and that's what they're going to come over i mean stay away from the united nations stay away from it well you know as they well want as to I steal do, from you they want they to steal you. what you have and kill you they want to take, kill you and they want to take christ away from and you. they want to do the same thing now they want to subvert you they want you they want to make you accept sodomy they want to make you accept uh, child killing which is two things that got israel brought into captivity and the number uh, one city in the whole entire world of sodomy is tel aviv israel and the number one, uh, one of the highest abortion rates in the entire world is uh, Israel. That is not the Israel of God. They're the synagogue of Satan. And I know it's going to get me in trouble. You're anti semite Well, I don't, I'm not anti-language. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I'm not anti-language. Semite's a language. I, if you want to preach the gospel in Semite, go ahead and do it. I ain't got yeah. no problem with that. I, I My problem is they're is this, Antichrist. That's right. They're Antichrist. Yeah. Zionism is Antichrist. Dispensationalism is Antichrist. So if there's an Antichrist, there's an anti-Israel. A fake Christ, a fake Israel. A fake Israel. A fake people of God, a true people of the God. The true people of God have always, all the way through the book, from the Old Testament to the New New Testament, we see that in the first century to the Jew first, the Bible teaches that, he always pulled out and saved a remnant to himself, always, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and the word used in the Old Testament is translated into the Greek in the New Testament, it means the same thing, it means the called out ones, which translated into English means church. The church has always been the Israel of God, it's not replacing Israel, it is Israel. And all those who believe. Jesus said in uh, uh, John chapter 10, verse 16, He said, Other sheep I have. That's us Gentiles. You know, and I, I praise the Lord. I'm going to follow a Jew right off into the kingdom of heaven every day of the week. You know, but I'm not going to follow the false Jew, the synagogue of Satan, into hell. I'm not going to do it. You know, that Israel flag is, is, a, uh, is a flag of cursing. It's an occultic curse. That's where we get the word hex from. The hexagon stars, where we get the word curse it's from. It's a hexagram. It's a hexagram. That's Absolutely. Right. And yeah. you read, uh, you read uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 26. Go read it sometime. It talks about that that star is what got Israel brought into captivity. And the first martyr of the Christian church was Stephen. And he gave them the same Sunday school lesson. He said that you're of your star, Rephraim that you, you worship Moloch. And Moloch is where they throw their children off into a fire. Sacrifice their children. So you see, we've come Abortion full circle. Abortion is the same thing. The cross. The cross is the symbol of God. Amen. Not this one, two, three, four, five, six. That's Amen. 666. That's Antichrist. That's why uh, uh, heretics like Rick Warren... You be aware of the people. Anything coming out of America, be aware of it. I mean, be aware of me. I'm not telling. I'm not telling you to believe away. But I we're do. repenting. We're repenting. I'm here to repent. But not only that, I'm here to tell you: don't take any man's word for it. All men's words are a lie. Go to the book. The word of God. It's an open book test. It behoove you to open the book. It's just that simple. You know, that's where my life is. I am subject to this book. I guarantee you. You can ask any man that knows me. That if you think I'm doing something wrong, you bring me to this word. You can show me where in the word I've got it wrong. I'll correct. You know, I'll submit it to the word, the authority of God's word. He only ukwele. Here is truth. He only ukwele. And I'm subject to it. Completely. Mzungu, 
Okay, he said Caucasian. We're Mzungus. Okay. Mzungu anasema mtubu. I right. repent. Repent. But we're of one blood, and the blood that, uh, that we are of spiritually is the blood of Christ. Amen. It's the blood of Christ. And if you're in Christ, then you're my brother. You're my sister. Amen. It's that simple. And uh, there's no uh, higher race. Darwin was a lie, and it got into this hyper election thing. No, 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 uh, uh. No. That if you that if you are in Christ, if you have called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you're my brother in Christ, and I have a duty towards you to tell you the truth. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you the truth. Any anything coming out of the pro-life movement no. in America. Anything coming out of the so-called pro-life movement of Catholicism, reject it quickly. Because it's not there to protect the pre-born child. Like he was saying, it's, it's a, a false opposition. It is. The, the, where, they can, where they can just go along with it, passively go along with it, and uh, you know the, the, they can kill children with impunity and then turn around and tell you you can't do nothing about it. And ladies, let me tell you something. Hear me, I'm not a misogynist, even though I get, I get uh, condemned of uh, 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 being so, but I'm here to tell you something. Don't cut your men out of this issue. We've done it in America, and we've done a big disservice to the preborn child because fathers have been given the authority to protect their children. That's right. And in America, that has been taken away. Fathers cannot protect their preborn children from the killers, and they can't protect their born children either from feminism. Feminism is putting uh, uh, upside down again. It's inverted things. You know, uh, women are taking the place of men. And then when things go really wonky and weird and terrible, they want to blame men. And men are sitting here going, well, hey, what do you want me to do? You took my authority away from me. You took my power away from me. You took my ability to protect my children. What do you want me to do about it? You know, but they'll do it. I've heard them in the pro-life movement. They'll condemn men for not getting involved in the man saying, well, hey, won't you sit down and shut up and let me be a man then? Won't you let me stand up and protect these children like a man's supposed to protect them? So ladies, don't you fall for it whenever the, whenever the pacifist of, of the so-called pro-life movement of the uh, Jesuit Catholics and the, uh, the false dominionists and the uh, uh, charismaniacs and all the rest of it coming out of America, reject it. And reject it quickly and rebuke them as Antichrist. It's because a, that's exactly what they are. It's They're a Antichrist. seduction. It's a it seduction. Is. It's a seduction. It is. Just like it was in the Garden of Eden with the serpent. It's a seduction. Well, here's another thing I want to add, too. I know the video's getting <clears throat> long, but I want to add this. Okay. If we go to Ephesians chapter 5, okay, and if we as men, now, I'm talking as men. Okay. If we as men would honor the position God has given women, and women, you need to understand the, position, the honorable position God has put you in. And if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, that you are to present yourselves as the bride of Christ. You're the very image of the church. You really are. And that's why uh, the Bible says that uh, women are supposed to be subject to their husbands as unto Christ. The men are supposed to, to give the example to the world of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. That means Ladies, that, that means you're not a pastor. You can't be. There's no way. You're, you're flipping things upside down and you're leaving your position of honor and you're trying to usurp a man in his position. It doesn't work. You're calling Jesus a liar and when you're contrary to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're calling Jesus Christ a liar, you're antichrist. I mean, you can't have it any other way. When you're contrary to Christ, you're antichrist. But I'm saying that this, men, now I'm going to talk to you men a minute. As Jesus went to that cross and laid down his life for his bride, that's what we're to do. As Jesus went to that cross and laid down his life, we're to lay down our lives for our children, we're to lay down our lives for our wives, and that includes proper defense against evil aggression. And if Amen. anybody tries to take that position away from you, they're not your friend. That's right. Anybody that would disarm you, anybody who would say that you don't have the right to protect yours and yours, I mean, the, the seat of your line, you up. They're setting you up for genocide. They're setting you up for genocide. genocide. They mean to kill you. Anybody that would disarm you is not your friend. 
Anybody who is your friend will be more than glad that you are armed because one of these days you might have to go back to back. You know what that means, right? You get somebody, you're in the middle of a ride, you want somebody, on, you go back to back. That's you're right. watching that's each right. other. That's right. And see, that's what's going to happen. So ladies, listen, don't poke holes in your covering. Build up your men. Build up the men. Uh, uh, submission is not a bad thing. It is a glorious thing. It is representing the relationship between the bride and the faithful and true bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you between the Father and the Son. Honor. And between the Father and the Son. You have been given that place of honor. And don't step beyond it. Just don't do it. Because you're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up to be taken advantage of by the devil. There's no reward. <laughs> the same reward we got no in, the gar in the Garden of Eden was death. He promised her, be like a god, mm -hmm. and you got death. And it's nothing's different. If you go contrary to the words of Christ that is represented in this book, my friends, you're Antichrist. You can't have it any other way. If you're contrary to Jesus Christ, you are Antichrist. And I'm telling you right now, and I mean it with all sincerity and with a great deal of grief in my heart, that the pro-life movement in America is Antichrist. They do not represent Jesus. I don't care how many of their great swelling words and I'm the end time prophet of God and come follow me and we're going to crusade and we're going to do all this stuff. No, they're liars. You know they're them thieves. by their fruit. They've got liars. bad fruit. They've got bad fruit. They're liars and thieves and they're coming up the sheepfold another way. That's what they're doing. You know, whenever they start denying... They, if they can't say... A lot of times, it's, we even see it in the first three chapters of Genesis... It wasn't so much what Satan said as what he initially left out. Because we see all through the second chapter of Genesis, the Lord God said, the Lord God said, the Lord God said, over and over again, it says the Lord, almost every verse, the Lord God said. Then we get to the third chapter of Genesis. And it, it's uh, the first lie of the devil was what he didn't say. It's what he left out. And he says, hath God said. He left the Lord out. Hmm. And that was the first part of the deception. And I'm telling you, the first part of the deception in this issue is they cannot say the word person. They cannot. They refuse to say it. And the whole issue has always hinged upon that word right there, person. And if you can't say person, don't try to tell me how biblical you are because our very salvation is based on the person of Christ. Because the great I am became, became a, a person. person. A Amen. person, a human person, but a person. Amen. So there it is, Kenya. God bless you. Hey, thank you so much. I see the videos. Uh, I see the little kids holding a I'm a person posters. Up. You don't know what a blessing it is to my heart to see that. And uh, please keep keep up the good work, guys. Keep up the good work. I mean, y'all, it's just wonderful. It blesses me to the very depths of my Amen. soul. It really does. So keep up the good work. This old scroungy man, I, I can't believe how good God has been to me and, and the blessings. And y'all are one of the biggest ones in my life. Amen. To be able to see that, it just, it's just a wonder to me. You know, and I know it's the work of God. It ain't me the too. work of Rick. It's just the work of God. It really is. Me too. Anyway, thank y'all. Keep we up the you. good work. And please be warned. Anything coming out of America, you better take it with a little bit of salt and some skepticism because it's meant to overthrow you. Amen.